Assalamualaikum, selamat pagi, selamat sejahtera. Okay, uh, this morning maybe we discuss the three things. This is the last part of the topic on food crystallization. First, we will we'll look at recrystallization. So, recrystallization, penghaburan semula. So, it means that we have the crystal already formed. But the crystal may, you know, uh, probably melt due to uh, improper storage condition. So, maybe the temperature is uh, very high higher than the melting temperature of the crystal itself, themselves, then the crystal can melt. This is what usually happen you know, uh, on ice cream. That's probably the easiest example, which probably all of us have experienced. Yeah? You buy an ice cream from the supermarket. Um, if you take time to get home, then it will melt. Who want to eat? melted ice cream. It's not nice. Yeah. Then, of course, you can put it again back to the, in the freezer and it can again harden. So basically, actually, the, the, the melted ice cream would crystallize, recrystallize in this case. Okay. So the fat crystal will melt and crystallize. So, and therefore, it will recrystallize. The ice melt to form water we put in the freezer, it will melt again, it will crystallize again. So this is again recrystallization. But this time, the crystallization is not the same, the, the crystal form not in the same way compared to the original process that we used to produce the product, to prepare the product. In processing of ice cream, in the ice cream machine, the temperature is controlled very carefully so that we can achieve control nucleation. So during this process, this is the stage or the point when we form uh, whether a small number of crystal or a huge number, large number of crystal, uh, whether we form um, big crystal or small crystal by controlling the cooling uh, rate. So this is the point where we control very, very carefully. But um, the freezing that we do at home, when we put in the freezer, there is no way we can control uh, the process as we wish. Because basically, we just put in the freezer and leave it there. There's no way we can control the cooling rate. There's no way we can control uh, what kind of crystal we want, what kind of crystal distribution uh, we want, what kind of crystal size we want. So. Um, and therefore, during recrystallization, we probably will get uh, a different kind and a different set of uh, crystal properties compared to the original product. Then the next one, uh, I will, maybe I, I will uh, touch a bit on this uh, polymorphism. But uh, have, you, have you actually come across or learn a bit in other courses about polymorphism. Have you heard about this term, polymorphism? Maybe, but not really sure what it means. Yeah. Uh, then the other one is controlling crystallization. Maybe we cannot finish everything today, uh, but we still have another slot next week. But at least we can, uh, we can prepare. We can prepare for your. Uh, for your test uh, on Monday. Everyone looks smart today? I know you have presentation, yeah? So how you dress also will be marked. Uh? <laughs> but certainly, all of you look nicer today. Previously look nice, but today look nicer. Okay. 
Uh, let's, read, re let's read this long sentence and see whether it makes sense to you or not. Eh? Once equilibrium in phase volume has been attained, changes still may take place in the crystalline structure during long-term storage, especially where temperature and what is RH? Relative humidity are likely to vary over time. These changes within the crystalline structure is to minimize the energy of the system further. That is, to approach the global equilibrium. So previously, I think also I have explained to you. Okay, so when, when the crystal form, the, the storage temperature can fluctuate. Yeah? Especially during storage, uh, during uh, transportation from the factory to the outlet, to the supermarket, to the shop. So you know, in the in the in the uh, in the transport in the, in the in the lorry or whatever that we use to transport, yeah, uh, the temperature probably uh, not controlled uh, properly. So there there could be a, a fluctuation of temperature, and also maybe very high relative humidity. So the crystal is exposed to very high relative humidity. So all this uh, external condition can cause the crystalline structure, uh, the crystalline, uh, the crystal to to change, eh? to to melt. So this uh, likely that the temperature and the RH are likely to vary over time. So these changes within the crystallized crystalline structure is to minimize the energy of the system. Remember. Um, when, when, when the system form crystal, they always want to reach the thermodynamic equilibrium. Yeah? They wa always want to go back to the, the point on the solubility curve. Until they, reach, until they reach that point, they are not yet in so-called global equilibrium. Once they have reached the equilibrium, no more uh, no more change in the in the in the in the phase volume in the amount of crystal that is formed. Okay. So two common example of free crystallization. One is coarsening of ice crystal in frozen food during storage. So this is also very common, and formation of a phenomenon called fat bloom in the chocolate, which is a formation of like a white patches. Right? or white patches which looks like a more growth on the surface of the chocolate. A fresh, new fresh chocolate usually is smooth and shiny, but some, uh, when you get bloom, this phenomenon called bloom, um, the, the surface of the chocolate looks dull, and maybe you can see some white patches yeah? uh, on the chocolate. So this is called fat bloom. So this phenomenon, these two phenomena, coarsening of ice crystal and formation of fat bloom is actually is the outcome or as a result of recrystallization. Uh, this, uh, this slide actually um, is related to the phenomenon of polymorphism. Yeah? What, what is polymorphism? I think better uh, I will show you the next slide. Okay, polymorphism. Um, it's, a, it's a physical phenomenon. Okay? It's a physical phenomenon. You can think of um, a crystal. I think I've explained it before. So let, let's uh, read the sentence. Some materials exhibit the ability to crystallize into multiple crystal structures. So that is what polymorphism is. The ability of the crystal to form multiple structures you know it is like a one person who can uh, who can uh, clone themselves yeah into like a different person maybe that's not the best analogy but um, imagine um, imagine this room the whole room is a crystal and we are the molecules that form the crystal. Okay? So this, look around us, 
the position of each one of us. So there is one crystal. Let's say this is alpha. We call, we call it alpha form. Okay? But we can now switch position. Yeah? Switch position. Still the same person, the same people, the same molecules, but in different position. So we get now another form of crystal. So we, let's call it maybe beta prime. And again, we can repeat this. Change again the position. Same people, same molecules, but we have a different arrangement of the molecules. We get another form of crystal form or crystal structure. And we can call it beta. So that is what polymorphism is. There is no change basically in the chemical composition, the same type of molecules. But there is a change in the position or the arrangement of the molecules in the crystal lattice. Okay? So that's what polymorphism is. And as a result of poly polymorphism, although it's the same molecules but different form of crystal uh, structure, which we call polymorph, they have a very different physical properties. They have different melting point, yeah? especially. They, have, they can have a different shape. They can have a different size. So different polymorph, uh, or the phenomenon of polymorphism would bring about changes, not in the chemical property or chemical properties, but in the physical properties. The melting point, crystal size, crystal shape. Okay? And different polymorph, alpha, well, maybe we, we start from delta, the least, uh, the least stable form, delta, or maybe even gamma, then we have alpha, we have beta prime, we have beta, even the beta form also we have beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, beta Four, five, six, seven, eight, eleven, ten, twelve, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. <laughs> okay? So, this different type of crystal from the same, you know, um, composition, they have different physical structures. They have different stability. They have different stability. Yeah? So, the most stable probably is beta form. The least stable maybe you know, well, alpha, delta form. Okay. So, polymorphism is basically the ability to crystallize into multiple crystal structures depending on the arrangement of the molecules. Molecules can be arranged in different form. For example, sorbitol. Sorbitol is, uh, we, call, we call it a sugar alcohol. Basically, it is glucose in the form of hydrogenated. Yeah? We, do, we do some chemical modification on glucose, and then we get sorbitol. So sorbitol is a group of, uh, is a group of carbohydrate. Uh, we call them sugar, alcohol, or polyols. So in food ingredients, actually, we, when we learn about uh, sweetness, there's a group, big group of uh, uh, sugar, sugar alcohol. Eh? Sorbitol is one of them and the most common one also. So sorbitol can form for polymorph. And maybe different type of sugar or different type of fat, different type of uh, material can form different kind of uh, polymorph, different number of polymorph. Even starch. Starch is a big polymer, but starch also can form, uh, can exhibit polymorphism and can form polymorph. When you learn more about starch, you know, uh, you will see that starch has, you know, polymorphic form, at least three polymorphic form, type A, type B, type C. Yeah? In fat or lipid, um, lipid is one of, uh, of fat, triglyceride, yeah? Fat in particular. Is very 
very prone or very easy to form polymorph. So there are three main polymorph, alpha, beta prime, and beta. Although in some cases there may be additional polymorph, a very low stability, which is the, the, uh, which is the gamma form. Yeah? And subclasses in polymorphic form, even like beta, we have beta 1, beta 2, right up to beta 12. Okay. So just remember the perumpamaan, the analogy that I gave you just now. Polymorph, it actually start from the same uh, type of uh, the, uh, composition, yeah? but a different arrangement. The way the molecules are arranged in the crystal lattice. We can think of different way how we can uh, arrange the molecules in one small crystal lattice. Again, imagine, I always give the class as an example, if we have, say, two by two here, the molecules are arranged in one, in a square crystal lattice. So we have Mariam there, we have uh, Zira. Uh, Zira there, we have Ikhwan. Uh, Ikhwan there, and we have, I don't know who here. <laughs> So this is a square crystal lattice, right? Can we think of other ways how we can arrange them? Well, someone can put their head down, <laughs> their leg up. You no, know, uh, there are many ways. Well, we can uh, let's uh, you know this uh, now. Um, all all of you facing this way, but we can turn. Two of us can turn and face each other, or we can face di diagonally. No, there are many ways. So if you can think of uh, in a crystal lattice, whether it's a triglycerides, whether it is a sorbitol, whether, you know, uh, whatever solute, can think of this molecule can be arranged in one small unit of crystal lattice in many different ways. And therefore, they will form a different kind of uh, crystal structure. So I hope it's clear. What is the meaning of polymorphism? Polymorphism is a phenomenon. It's a process. The product of polymorphism is called polymorph. And the result of uh, polymorphism, each polymorph would have different physical properties. They have different density. So it makes sense, right? When we, change, when we arrange the molecules in different way, then the density will be different, right? The least stable form, bentuk yang paling tak stabil, have lower density, lower melting point, lower heat of fusion, meaning that they can be, if you want to melt the crystal, we need less energy to melt the crystal because they are less dense, they have lower melting point, since the molecules in the less stable forms are not arranged in their lowest energy conformation. Okay. The least stable form is not yet or are still quite far from the equilibrium, from reaching the global equilibrium. Stable means already in the equilibrium state. So when the crystal is stable, like the beta form, is the most stable. So they are probably already uh, reached the global equilibrium. The least stable form, like the gamma form just now, or the delta alpha form, or the delta form, they are not in the most stable state. They are in lowest energy conformation, meaning that they are still trying, the molecules in the crystal lattice is still trying to pack themselves into the most stable energy to reach the equilibrium. And therefore, they will continually, continuously trying to reach the stable form. And therefore, they can transform from, say, the gamma to alpha, alpha to beta prime, beta prime to beta. Uh, then when they reach the beta stage, they are happy, they are probably stable and there should be no more phase changes. There should be no more uh, change in the phase volume. 
okay. Gibbs any free energy, if you learn thermodynamic, um, I don't know, somewhere you should have learned thermodynamic, at least the basic, maybe in your form 6, maybe in your metric, in physical chemistry, right? So you learn about the uh, zeroth law, first law, second law, third law of thermodynamic. And somewhere maybe you have learned about the Gibbs energy, Gibbs free energy. Okay, so if you have forgotten, maybe you can go back and uh, read. Uh, but basically, we need a different level to form the different to form the different form to form the the crystal to form the crystal okay we need to uh, release the energy right so that the molecules can come close together because if they have high energy they don't want to sit together they don't want to stick quietly they will just rock and roll so they must let go the energy so crystallization is an exothermic process, right? So that is the free chip Gibbs uh, energy, yeah? And you can see here, to form beta, we have to let go the highest. You can see beta here. This is beta prime. This is alpha. Okay? So to form the most stable form, which is beta, the Gibbs energy is the highest for beta, lower for beta prime, lowest for alpha. If we have gamma and uh, delta, uh, it's even lower. Okay. So in terms of uh, in terms of the formation of crystal, the easiest and the fastest to form is the least stable form. Makes sense, that? Makes sense, can? Because the molecule have uh, the molecules uh, arrange loosely in the crystal lattice. They don't have to, you know, take a long time to pack themselves nicely into the small area in the crystal lattice. They just go and sit there, kind of, sort of. Eh? Uh, so they don't. Uh, uh, they form the, probably the, the easiest and the fastest to form is the least stable form. The most, apa ni, bentuk, uh, imagine uh, apa ni, the molecules packed in, in the crystal lattice loosely. Still in the range ordered terato, tapi loosely. Okay? Dia tak perlu nak mengambil masa yang panjang nak, you know, nak susun betul-betul carefully, oh baris tepat, you know, 90 degree, baris ini tepat. Jadi kalau macam itulah, kalau macam kita buat perbarisan kan. Yeah? Kristal pun macam orang yang berbaris dalam barisan yang teratur kan. Kalau macam Ami, oh, you know, shoulder semua mesti sama. Ni. So take time, take time. Okay? So to form beta, it takes time. Because the molecules have to be arranged very nicely, lurus. Angle, kata ke 45 degree, mesti 45 degree, point zero, <laughs> something like that. So, but to form the least stable form, it's faster, easier. So, it will form faster, but beta will form, in terms of rate, this one in terms of the energy, in terms of rate, uh, initially, at lower temperature, the least stable form would form faster than alpha, Beta prime and beta and beta probably will take longer time. Yeah. Okay, this uh, I think I can skip this one. This is what I just explained just now. The least stable form or the less stable polymorph generally crystallize before the most stable form. 
after crystallization has taken place, the less stable polymorph then transform to the more stable form. Slowly, the molecule will take time to arrange to the more st stable form. Eventually, the more stable polymorph will form, although this may take many months in food products. Okay. But there is always uh, some exception. Yeah? Some exception. Pengecualian. Just now I said in the, in the system, the molecules will always try to form the most stable. Although initially they will form the least stable polymorph, the least stable crystal. But slowly they will try to go to the or to form the most stable form, which is beta. But there are some exceptions. Some fats, for example, milk fat and palm oil, our palm oil, does not crystallize into the beta form. They only, the final form that they can form, the most stable form, this milk fat and palm oil fat can, can form is the beta prime. What is the reason? Because of the structure, the complexity of the structure of the triglycerides, the fat in milk and in palm oil. The structure just not possible to arrange into the crystal lattice that form the beta. Only the beta prime. So this is only two examples. But uh, there are actually uh, several types of fat, vegetable fat, especially plant fat, that can only crystallize into beta prime, not beta. So you must be aware of this also. Yeah? Now, so a bit about recrystallization and polymorphism. So in most cases, we do not want recrystallization because usually it is detrimental to the food. Detrimental meaning it can cause quality deterioration can reduce the quality of the food because the crystal have changed to something that is different from the original crystal and usually uh, will bring about undesirable effect. It will cause coarsening, for example, coarsening of the ice crystal so it doesn't taste, you know, you can feel on your tongue, kasar, uh, it's not something that we, you know, compare with those like McDonald's ice cream, very smooth, you really enjoy that. We learn to enjoy that kind of texture and mouthfeel. So something that is different, then maybe it's still okay, perfectly safe to eat and still good, but not as good as we, uh, you know, the, the type of product we're familiar. Polymorphism, I think I have explained it uh, quite well, but we, have, we still have any to us, maybe I can clarify before I proceed to controlling crystallization. No? As always. Okay. I hope you are all awake. <laughs> okay, let's go now. Uh, discuss about controlling crystallization. Yeah? So now, um, imagine uh, we are now, the, the process of crystallization now is uh, uh, progressing, sedang berlaku. How do we control the process to achieve the desired product? To achieve the desired type of crystal that we want. Do you want alpha? Do you want beta? Do you want beta prime? We can control. Do you want 10,000 
crystal or you want 100,000 crystal in terms of numbers. What kind of distribution? Okay, you always get a distribution. Distribution means there's a small crystal, there's a me medium sized crystal, there's an average size crystal, there's a bigger crystal, there's a very big, very big crystal. We always get a distribution. Yeah, that is the normal uh, thing in life. Yeah, just like us. And I look around in this room. We almost get, maybe, we still get normal distribution, maybe, but maybe quite narrow. Do you know why? If, if we have a very wide distribution, we probably have someone who is very fat here, maybe 250 kilogram, 200 kilogram. Someone who is very thin and light, maybe 35 kilogram, who knows? Yeah, we don't have maybe. Maybe the more, we have about 45 kilogram. And we have average. Maybe average like me, about 60 kilogram. Yeah? So we have a distribution. So similarly, when the crystal form, it's, very, it's almost impossible to just get, oh, I want a crystal size, the mean size is 10 micron. There's no, <coughs> no way. But you still can control to get a very narrow distribution. Meaning that, okay, I want to get a crystal, distrib a crystal size distribution, maybe average mean 10 micron, but plus minus maybe 5 micron. So I can get anywhere between 5 to 15 micron. Very narrow distribution. Yeah? Or you can say, I want uh, uh, 20 micron mean size, average size plus minus 15 micron wow so there is very wide distribution very high standard deviation yeah so when we talk about controlling crystallization we talk about the crystal size distribution the number of crystal the size of the crystal okay so why, <clears throat> first we have to understand why we want to control crystallization. Because we want to get the desired crystalline structure. We want to get the correct number. We want to get the correct size and distribution, size distribution. We want to get the correct shape. Crystal can have different shape. We want to get the, de the, the desired polymorph. For example, in chocolate, we always want to achieve, we control the process to get the beta polymorph. So we want to, con to, to get the desired crystalline structure so that we get the desired quality in terms of texture and flavor when the crystal melt whatever flavor that it contains will be released different crystal melt a different melt uh, point different temperatures and they will have a different kind of flavor release so that will also affect that actually affect the quality the appearance, the, in chocolate, the, we get the beta type crystal that will also actually contribute to the shiny, shiny surface of the chocolate bar and the shelf stability of the product. If we get the most stable form, then if we control the storage temperature and humidity, there's no more further changes in the beta form. But if your product contain maybe mostly alpha form, which is very unstable. So during storage, this alpha form probably would transform into beta prime, and beta prime may be transformed into beta. So these changes during storage may bring about some undesirable effect on the quality, on the characteristic of, of the product. 
So when we, when we talk about controlling crystallization, one of the most uh, important thing is actually to control size distribution. So you understand the meaning of distribution, okay? Example in sugar products or in frozen food, frozen products like sugar, frosted cereals, fondants, pan, candies, caramels, in frozen food like ice cream, frozen dessert, in lipid-based product like tempering of chocolate, butter, margarine, margarine, long, long spelling, ma should be a, shortening, etc. In this product, okay, in these products, with respect to crystal size distribution, what we want is, we want numerous small crystal, large number, a huge number of crystal of small size, tiny crystal. So numerous small crystal would give us a smooth texture. Yeah, because small crystal cannot be detected, cannot be sensed by our tongue. So we feel it as a smooth texture. So in this type of products, we want a numerous small crystal because that would give us a smooth texture. But in, in other products or process, processes, we need a smaller number, but large crystal. Common example here is efficient separation during refining of sugars, fractionation of fats, and freeze concentration. In the manufacturing of sugar, sucrose, uh, table sugar, we control the crystallization, but our objective is to get large number, large crystal, large size, and a small number in terms of number. Because when they form crystal in the sugar manufacturing process, we want to separate the crystal by centrifugation or by filtration. So if the, imagine if you want to separate by filtration, like in fat fractionation, we can separate by filtration. So if we have a small number of crystal compared to big crystal, which one is easier to filter? The big crystal, because the small crystal will pass through the filter. When all the small crystal would block and clog the filter faster compared to the big crystal. So the, the filter jam cepat because this, this small crystal will form a solid cake. A solid cake because during filtration we also apply vacuum. So you can imagine it will form very hard solid cake on the filter then the filtration rate would reduce. Then you have to remove again before, you know. But if you form large crystal, it would not form uh, it would not clog the filter as easy or as fast as a small crystal. So here we want a large number of crystal and a few of them to, to, to facilitate the process so that the process can be done more efficiently. The filtration, the centrifugation can be done more efficiently. So this is one situation where we control the crystallization not to get large number and small size, but small number and, and large size. It's the opposite. Yeah? And what is freeze concentration? Freeze concentration. Maybe I think you will learn in food processing. Maybe, I don't know, next year maybe. Yeah? Maybe I'll skip this for a moment. But basically, in freeze concentration also, you uh, form ice crystal. Yeah? We form ice crystal. So, like, like, for example, a fruit juice, a fruit juice, you want to produce a concentrated fruit juice. 
concentrated fruit juice like that cordial and so on. So how how can you do that? Daripada jus yang you know yang cair tu you nak pekatkan dia. Macam mana? Remove the water. Remove the water lah. Remove the water. How do you remove the water? Huh? How you how do you remove the water? Filtration. Filtration, yeah. Maybe filtration. Can you boil off the water? Also can, but when you boil off the water, you also boil some of the volatile component. Remember, we learned about flavor. So after you boil, maybe you get concentrated orange juice or whatever juice, but it doesn't taste like a fresh juice anymore. And the vitamins also already destroyed. You can also, uh, okay, uh, you don't boil it at atmospheric pressure. Let's boil it under vacuum. Reduce the pressure. So that, can, so that you can boil the water at lower temperature. The water can boil and evaporate, vaporize at lower temperature. So you can preserve some of the vitamins and so can. But anything that can remove the water so that you can produce more concentrated juice. But freeze concentration also the same principle, to remove the water. But in this case, we crystallize the water. Okay? So by freezing, we crystallize the water to form ice, solid ice. And now this solid ice, the remaining, the remaining uh, flavor, the juice itself would not crystallize. So now we can separate the ice crystal from the concentrated juice. But freezing would not have the same, uh, the same uh, effect in terms of the effect on the vitamin and so on. It can preserve the flavor, preserve the vitamins. So freeze concentration is a good process actually to produce high quality Juice, uh, juice concentrate. Yeah, juice concentrate. We can relate. We can relate this with what we learn in food flavor to produce juice concentrate. But again, the principle here: we want to produce large ice crystal and small number of them so that we can filter them easily, separate it from the concentrated juice. Okay. Control. Controlling crystal size distribution by controlling the kinetics of nucleation and growth. Uh, again, remember, at the nucleation as well as during the growth, the curve, remember? The, that curve, point A, point O, oh, oh, point B, point C. Remember? Point A, the driving force, point B, point C. There's a different driving force to drive the process so that you can control where you want to get the desired crystal size distribution. Um, this is the growth curve. So we have a growth rate on the y-axis, the driving force. So still we have point A, point B, point C. If you don't understand now what, I, what I'm going to explain to you, please go back and read the notes, the handout. Or if you can get the book, Richard Hartel, then everything is explained very detailed there. But basically, um, there are two situations, as I, as, we, uh, as I explained in the previous slide. You want to have large, numerous, small size crystal, or you want to have a few, but large number, a large size crystal. So, if we overlay, kita overlay kan graph nucleation curve and the growth curve. So, if you want to get numerous number and small size crystal, you want to be at point B. Point B is the point of maximum, right? Maximum rate of nucleation maximum growth rate. 
So, if you know what is the condition at point B, what is the temperature, what is the cooling rate, what is the uh, degree of supersaturation, then you can adjust the processing condition so that you are at point B, so that you can get large number of crystal with small size. So for different system, for different system, point B has to be determined by experiment. Okay. So we, we cannot say at temperature X and sub degree of supersaturation Y, you all you will get large number of crystal with small size. What is the temperature? What is the cooling rate? What is the degree of supersaturation? That would depend on the system. That has to be determined experimentally. But if we know, then we will adjust the condition so that we are at the maximum rate of nucleation and maximum growth so that we can get this. But if you, what you want is this, large uh, size, small number, then you can be at point A or you can be at point C. At point A, the driving force is relatively low. At point C also, the driving force is rel also relatively low. Both have a low driving force, A and C, but they have different kind of uh, uh, they, they, they have different kind of reason or factors why the driving force is low. Here the driving force is low, why? Because point C is near the glass transition. What is so special about if the point is, if the system is close to glass transition? Remember I explained earlier uh, in the previous lecture? When the system is at or close at glass transition temperature, the viscosity of the system, viscosity, viscosity, viscosity of the system is very high. Viscosity of the system very high, the molecules are not able to move easily, so they are not able to crystallize easily. So they will form small number of crystal. Okay. At point A, the solution is already supersaturated, but then the degree of supersaturation, how far it is from the equilibrium curve, the, the equilibrium curve? Not far. Remember I show compare point A, point B, point A above also the solubility curve, but point B even higher, right? So the situation is different. The reason is different why the driving force is low at point A, is low at point C. But the driving force is low, that's all. The reason may be different. So the driving force is low for nucleation and for growth. The driving force here, here, here is low for, for nucleation as well as for growth. And therefore, the system will form small number of crystal <coughs> and large size. This maximum, so you can the the the, the, the nucleus or the nuclei will form a small number of them. A lot of nucleus. The remaining solutes in the solution has to attach themselves to each of the. Nucleus. Kena bahagi-bahagikan dengan 100 nucleus yang terbentuk. So, dia tak boleh nak grow besar sangat sebab yang yang tinggal tu tak banyak lagi kan. Tapi, uh, instead of 100 nucleus terbentuk, you have 10 nucleus only. 10 nuclei terbentuk. Banyak lagi yang di sekeliling ni. So, each one of them will go to the 10 nucleus. So, each of the 10 nucleus will grow bigger. Boleh faham tak? Okay, so I think uh, stop here. I think uh, you can't wait to give your presentation. 
I wish I could stay and look at uh, watch your presentation. Be confident. 